coming up next on Safety and Awareness Today. We are going to cover motocross bicycling competition and it's a lot harder than it looks. Plus we'll meet a mom of a very special child and learn how she prepares for the school year. I have to write a lot of notes. But first we're going to have a chance to train with some future firemen. That's impressive. Safety and Awareness Today, sponsored in part by Reels Lighting by Jody. Dams, they are important. They bring us water, electrical resource power, and for our environment. But they do need to be inspected. Safety is a concern and engineering firms like Gomez and Sullivan make a difference on the safety of these dams. Let's go talk with Jerry Gomez right now. Now Gomez and Sullivan, uh, engineers, they deal with a lot of things, but they deal with dams. That's correct, Cliff. Okay. Um, it's similar to like when you would uh, go to a doctor, have a yearly checkup, um, we come out and inspect it to you know, check on the health of the dam. All right, now in regards to that, now Jerry, I find it intriguing because I've, I've always been intrigued with certain dams, especially like the Hoover Dam and things, they're just massive. Um, when we're talking about dams, there are some areas we aren't gonna be able to talk about because of security reasons since uh, the terrorist attack in our country. So we actually, on the internet and between you and I, there's some stuff we just can't talk about anymore. Uh, that's true. Uh, since 9-11, um, there have been information that used to be readily available on the internet about dams that uh, we no longer um, have available to us um, because other people could get in the wrong hands and could provide information that could be detrimental to uh, the, the safety. For the safety of not uh, the, only... The yeah. dam, but the public in general. In general. The security and the safety of a dam, what kind of things do you look for? Let's say, you know, is there such a thing as a dirt dam or a... And, and this region of the country we often have uh, dams made of concrete, uh, could be uh, stone masonry, um, some older dams might be constructed of timber and, and rock. Um, but the earth dams, what are we looking for if we're looking for uh, stability and structure? Well, often we go out to inspect them, we'll look to, uh, to make sure there hasn't been any movement. Um, now all earthen dams seep somewhat, but we yeah. have to make sure that it's uh, in a controlled manner, it's not bringing material from the embankment. Okay. It's, through with it, which could weaken the dam. Yep, and then you clear, you make sure the trees aren't there. I thought that was interesting because if the, if a tree grows there and the roots extend out and then the tree is pulled off. Right, it could that, be blown over in a windstorm and it could uproot part of the embankment, creating a, a possibly an unsafe situation down the road. And also we like to keep the veg, you know, the heavy vegetation off so that we can inspect it more easily. Okay, now you, we have a, a structuring of the importance of dams. A high priority dam is a dam that's looked at maybe yearly, if not even more, and that's because it's what? Well, if it's what we call a high hazard potential, that means that if it were to fail for whatever reason, then it could impact um, human life downstream or important structures, uh, you know, roads, bridges, things of that nature. And those dams, you know, are higher priority, so yep. we inspect more often. More often, and we're taking a look at those now. Now the uh, we know the we know some of the fun, fundamental importance of dam. We have water, and we we use the water and things like that. The, they're eliminating dams across the country. They're saying we don't need this one, we don't need that one. Uh, what are some of the priorities on how they determine which ones we really need to keep? Well, some dams, you know, uh, were built, you know, maybe a hundred or more years ago, and they might have powered uh, old mills and things like that that uh, are a long gone, and the owners okay. may not be known, they may not have been keeping the dam up, so it might be in disrepair and might be safety issues, and uh, and so. For those dams, you may look at, is it better to remove the dam and, and, and bring the uh, stream back to a free-flowing stream yeah. for yeah. the environment as opposed to the reservoir environment if it right. doesn't 
serve a useful purpose anymore. All right, dams are important and they are massive structures and you do a lot with that. I, I really appreciate you taking a moment with us uh, regarding dams and dam safety and, and what can be done and what we're looking for. And I know that there's people out there watching are going, oh, so people are staying on top of dams because we're worried about bridges as well as dams. Right. All sorts of areas like that that are a constant concern. Thank you very much for being with us today. You're very welcome. Uh, right. Thank you very much. Coming up on Safety and Awareness Today. Oh yeah, you gotta understand, I'm only doing a very short period of time. <laughs> Safety and Awareness Today, brought to you in part by McDonald's. I'm loving it. All right, early in the morning, it's before six o'clock, and I have an opportunity to talk with Andre Esposito of the Utica Fire Academy. I can't believe I'm up this early, but there's a lot of other people up, and they're awake and ready to do something. Andre, hey, it's a pleasure to see you and to be able to participate in this program. This is an incredible PT program you've got going here. Yes, it is. We uh, do a lot of work with the recruits every day. This is the time we're up every morning. We do PT Monday through Friday. Gee, now this isn't one of the recruits. This no. here is this is. Do is, you have a good name? We don't have a name for our prop. We've never put a name on it. <laughs> oh, this is just, just one of our props. <laughs> this, is, this is part of their physical test that they have to do. How much does that weigh? 165 pounds. 165 pounds. Holy! Wait a minute. 165 pounds. 100, oh, oh, he's not cooperating at all either. No, he's, he's dead weight. He's dead weight. He's dead weight. Now, what's your uh, what's your uh, position in the fire department? I'm a deputy fire chief with the Utica Fire Department. Deputy fire chief, okay, excellent. And uh, how long have you been doing this program? The program has been, uh, I think, I believe it's in its sixth year. I've been doing it for over two now. We were here at 5.30 and you're setting up the stations and you're set to go and these guys are, and they're from all over the state. All over the state. Uh, this particular class has nine departments. This program draws from different departments throughout New York State. This class includes representatives from Amsterdam, Glens Falls, Gloversville, Niskayuna, North Greece, Rome, Saratoga Springs, Schenectady, Scotia, Troy, and Waterville. And they all go through this rigorous 14-day training. Where do we start? We're going to start at station number one. Today, station. Today's workout is stations. We have 13 stations set up, and they do two minutes on each station. They go from station to station to station. It's a non-stop workout. All right. Okay. okay. So the first station is the hose pull. So you're down on one knee, you're grabbing the hose, and hand over hand. And what normally, this isn't weighted, but we've got a weight on the end of this prop. Yeah, there's a lot of weight on the end of this prop. <laughs> it's about uh, 50 pounds. We have a 25 pound weight in there, and the sled itself weighs about 25 pounds. So okay. Hand over hand. Okay, let me, let, me, let me try there. This exercise simulates pulling the hose off the truck to the fire hydrant or from the truck to the base of the fire area and bringing in the slack so that it can be used in the building or up a ladder. You put a camera on there, that was extra weight. All right. And then he's gonna pull it back and then you're gonna pull it back. And that's a two minute station. So wherever it ends up throughout the course of the two minute station, then we stop and you move stop, to the next station. Stop and then station. you go to the next station. All right, where's number two? Each station is a two minute drill. The second station is actually the other end of the hose pull. But then we move on to things like squats, jump rope, lunges, jumping jacks. But then there's Joe. Joe is a 165 pound non-cooperative dummy that you have to drag for two minutes and he feels closer to 200 pounds. He's going to show you with one hand. Easy to. Or two hands. And it's up to them how they, how they, how they drag the dummy. I'll try to give Joe yeah, a drag. I'll give Joe a drag. Joe. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Be nice, Joe. Nice, Joe. All right. Now, although Joe is heavy and uncooperative, he simulates somebody that's injured. The firemen have the option to use one hand or two hands to be able to take this individual to a safe area. I like the one hand. I think I like the one hand better. This simulate rescue, rescuing somebody from the building. Yeah, because they're not going to be helping. Nope, usually not. I'm tired. He's heavy. This is what they call the farmer's walk, and it simulates carrying tools to the site. 
Firemen use tools ranging from 30 pounds and up. But when they practice, they're always carrying 60 pound weights. When you say tool, you're talking about the saws. Could be a saw, uh, axe and halligan, uh, okay. hose, no matter what. We, a lot, most of our tools are heavy, uh, so try and get most of the cadets simulated on uh, carrying a lot of weight. Same thing again, two minutes. So he's holding on to 60 pounds. We've got 120 pounds total for two minutes. So 60 in each hand. 60 in each hand. After the farmers walk, their sit-ups, push-ups, vertical leaps, and stairs. I'm talking a lot of stairs. There's five sets of five flights of stairs, and he's going to go up and down as many times as he can in the two minutes. Okay. The, the really impressive thing is you got to understand this is just part of the PT program. So after you've done all those other things, all of a sudden you're standing here with hoses on your shoulder trying to go up these stairs. That's impressive. Five flights of stairs wouldn't normally be a big deal. But when you add two stacks of hoses on your shoulders and you have to do it for two minutes up and down, it becomes a big deal. Okay, and then down. Huh. Oh yeah, that's quite a setup. Yes it is. And you actually just built this for the use and practice. Correct, and normally in the two minutes, you did it one time, they would get through two times. They get through two. And just think, when you do when you do climb those stairs, if you're in, depending on the story of the building, you have to be ready to go to work when you get to the sixth yeah. or fifth floor. So you're, well, you you're, don't just have hoses, you have equipment too. You have equipment on also. And, and the coat, and the boots. CBA helmet, and coat, there's smoke. gloves. It's an, it's an incredible job that these people do, these men and women, regarding firefighting. Looking for more safety and awareness? Log on to www.cnyhomepage.com. Getting children ready for school is a challenge for any parent, but some parents have more to deal with than the rest. Well, it's really nice of you to invite us into your home. You have a beautiful home. Thank you. Yes, and, and you have two children, two young boys, yes, Alex and Nick. Yes. Alex, I know both the boys. Alex is a handful. He's got a lot of things going. He's very active. Always, yes, sir. Always, never slowing down. And Nick, he's not only active and he's not only interested in everything that's going around, but he also also has his own world to be in. Yes, he so, does. So Nick is, has autism. Yes. All right, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and we're re really very lucky on this show to talk about safety, but we also talk about awareness. And there is an awareness that needs to happen with the community and with people regarding young boys and girls as they grow older that have autism. And you deal with that every day, so I thought maybe you'd share a couple of ideas with us. I normally always arrange to meet his teacher Okay. to talk with his teacher, his new teacher, to explain to her any little idiosyncrasies that uh, might be important to Nick okay. or unexpected to her. All right, because autism is a state for a child, but that doesn't change the fact that they all have different personalities. Yes, sir. So Nick has his own little traits. You've met parents with autistic children, and they don't have the same traits as Nick does. Exactly. <laughs> and I also take Nick to meet her or uh, him, yeah, and uh, to get him familiar with the classroom, with the changes. Before, before the before class starts. Before school starts, yes. So there's preparation in advance of school even starting. That makes a big difference? Yes. Because uh, he's gonna, once school starts, he has to sit in the seat. Yes. So he gets a chance to go into the classroom and look around the classroom and uh, meet the teacher without all the distractions or without having to sit down and, and work. Okay. Um, it familiarizes him and it's a transition from last year. It makes him realize there's a change this year yep. and it's positive yes. and this is what you'll be able to expect on the first day of school. All right. Regarding children with autism, there's a lot of obstacles and a lot of factors that are involved in that, but one of the main ones is communication. Yes. So whether it be physical communication or verbal communication, they are kind of into their own world. Yes. All right, so to, to deal with that, what do you have to do? 
Um, I have to write a lot of notes. <laughs> okay. And make a lot of phone calls. I can't assume that Nick is going to communicate any important information to his teacher. Okay. Um, I have to make sure that that is all done. All right. And uh, we give him tools, we teach him, we encourage him to communicate as best as he can, but when it comes to important things, that needs to come through me. you got to make sure. Every so you, little detail. So you label everything. Everything has to be labeled because if he were to lose something, uh, he wouldn't say, that's mine. Um, and uh, He'd come home upset, but he wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he would know that it, it, it's gone now. Yes, he would very much. Oh, yeah. And so he isn't going to say anything. So if they're helps. misplaced, someone knows. Somebody knows, and those are next. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and working with a teacher. Now, there's a book that you, that you provide to teachers, and other teachers may want to just go out and get it for themselves. What was that, what's that book called? It's called You're Going to Love This Kid, and it's specifically about teaching um, children in the inclusive classroom. So okay. they're with age-appropriate peers, or they're with their peers, Okay. Um, but it is not a, a special classroom. Right. And the book uh, is a great tool for teachers, okay. and I try to do that every year to provide the new teacher with a tool and also tell them that I'm available at any time Anytime. for questions, um, anything at all. Even if it's not related to Nick, if it's okay. autism in general, okay. uh, I make myself available. It has been a pleasure to spend time with you Thank and, you very and much. share some of the things you do with, uh, with Nick. And I'm sure there's a lot of parents out there with their children who are autistic that are dealing with the same thing. Yes. Well, we all need to be aware and we all need to work for these children. Thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. Coming up on Safety and Awareness Today. Because it's working every part of my body. It's all about you, you know. It's a little bit different than regular motocross. Safety and Awareness Today, sponsored in part by Dream City Mattress. motocross bicycling competition and it's a lot harder than it looks. Hey Kevin, Kevin Crawford it's nice to be here Hi, with you. Track director and this is a great track. You checking out my bike? Yes I am. Is this going to be safe? Yes it is. Because that's what you want, you know, you're checking for what when you check the bike? I'm looking to make sure that everything is tight and that there's nothing sticking out on the bike anywhere to make sure okay. that it's as safe as possible right. for you when you're out here on the track. Okay. Before the before the competitors get out there, what else do you check? Check their gear. Absolutely. Uh, when you when we do the bike inspection, we make sure that you have long pants and a long sleeve shirt on at all okay. times. Yep. Um, it's good to see that you've. Wore a pair of gloves here today. Yeah, I brought um, my gloves. <laughs> so, <laughs> I brought my gloves from the dirt bike uh, thing we did. But I've done a little of this today. This is harder. This is a very competitive sport, riding these things. It's extremely competitive. Very yes, much so. Is. I mean, because it's working every part of my body. It's all about you, you know. It's a little bit different than uh, regular motocross. Bicycle motocross yeah. is about you and the bicycle. Yeah. It's very physical. Yeah. Now, you belong to a league. This is part of a league. What um, league is that? We are Central New York Bicycle Motocross, and we are sanctioned by the National Bicycle League. Okay, that's okay. great. Now, how many competitors do you have coming down here now? Uh, approximately 50 to 100 on any given Saturday night wow. for racing. A age um, range? Um, from five and under to 70 and over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I've loved the little I've done so far. I can't wait to do a little more. Um, we're going to talk to one of the competitors, Curie. I think you know her. Absolutely. I know Curie. Yeah, she's a sharp young lady. We're going to go over and take a minute and chat with her. Thank you for your time and letting us experience this sport. It has really been exciting. We're going to go talk to Curie right now, one of the competitors, but I really appreciate the time. Thank you. This is Curie Nelson. She's a sixth grader, she's 11 years old, and she does bicycle motocross. Do you do any other sports? Um, yeah, I do karate. You do karate, cheerleading, cheerleading. And basketball. Basketball. Which one's the hardest? Um, I'd say 
basketball. Really? Because yeah. this one seems pretty hard to me, so I guess you just love it, huh? Yeah. Yeah? You keeping up in school okay? Yeah. Yeah, so that's important too, right? All right. When you do this, what do you try to do when you're out there racing somebody? What's your main goal as you race? Um, to stay, stay safe. Stay safe? I like that goal. That's a good goal. I was trying to do that earlier when I was riding. I was trying to stay safe. Well, you're going to compete? You're going to stay in this sport for a long time? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Your I dad's so. in it too, isn't he? Yeah. He does quite a bit of this, by golly. Well, look, I want to wish you the best and you stay safe when you compete. All right, that a girl. Safety and Awareness Today shows in its second year and we have covered a lot of activities. If you have a sport, an activity, or a job that requires safety standards for you or the community, we'd like you to contact us. We'd like to cover it. Write us at Safety and Awareness at cnyhomepage.com.